Hello again, whiskey friends. Thanks for joining me today, everybody. And guess what? February, Ohio, why can't we do some porch drinking in this crazy weather where it's 60 degrees right now? So hopefully you appreciate the change of scenery and the outdoor set. I will do this as much as I can when the weather allows. So for today's review, we are going to get into the Woodford Reserve Double Oak. So I got a little bit of it poured here. Here's the bottle right here. I am excited to get into this one. I think this is a very important one to have scored in the scoring system. Just picked up one of these recently as a follow-up on a different video I did where I was trying to go back to just getting some regular things that are on the shelves. And this was number one on my hit list. And thus the first one I'm reviewing from that batch of bottles that I did in a recent bottle haul video. So let's kick off the show and let's dive into this double oak. Thanks for joining me, everybody. So as mentioned off the top, this is the Woodford Reserve Double Oak. It comes in at 90.4% and, or no, 90.4 90 proof, not 90.4%, 90.4 proof. And then this was a store pick. So that's one thing I do like about these Woodford Double Oaks. If you have the chance to get a store pick, they aren't single barrel store picks. I think they're still just blends. And they're just able to taste the blends and fix pick which one they want out of the blends. But I do find that some of the flavors are at least a little more exaggerated when it comes to the picks. And that leads to a bit more depth. So they're the same price. So why not get the pick if you got them in your area? So I saw this pick here. And I wanted to introduce some people to this in an upcoming bourbon tasting. In general as well, this is a bottle I pretty much recommend to everybody regardless where they are in their bourbon journey. If they haven't had it before, I want to see them try it particularly, um, either as an introduction to double oak in general, or as something that's just a really nice sipper, a nice everyday sipper, nice by the fire sipper. I think it's one of the most dynamic whiskeys there probably is out there. And that double oak lends such a creamy texture to it that it really holds up in a whole lot of scenarios. And even though it's low proof, it's usually got like a nice finish on it too. So can be pretty dynamic, but that's just me generically talking about it. Let's get specifically into this one that we will be reviewing for the channel. But just keep in mind, this is a pick. You know, when we do get to the final scores, you know, there's going to be some variance depending on what pick you have or if you don't have a pick. But still, I appreciate where this one landed in the range. Well, cheers, everybody. Let's go into the nose and then we'll go into the palate. So the nose on this particular one doesn't give off a whole lot. I mean, we're going to get into some notes. There's some good notes there, but you got to work at it just a little bit. It doesn't come leaping out of the glass. The main note that I'll gravitate towards is going to be a uh, chocolate covered, probably like a light roast uh, espresso bean, but a chocolate covered espresso bean. There is a raspberry jam. That's kind of hiding underneath it as well. If it comes back on this tasting, I did pick that up on the palate during my official review, but we'll see if that translates here. Um, only other thing I would note is uh, a vanilla cream. You know, not quite like an ice cream. I'm almost equating it to a, a whipped cream, but maybe you're adding just a little bit of vanilla to that to bring out the extra flavor in that whip. also a good layer of pepper on this one that I like as well. So it does have some, some other dark notes to go with the espresso and the chocolate. It's got some pepper too. Not getting anything else on there. Let's jump into the palette. We'll go front of the palette, mid palette, and then go into the finish. Cheers, everybody. Mmm, man, that's a really good taste. Perfect for this environment here as I'm sitting here outside enjoying the weather. 
Mm, perfect for porch drinking. I'm going to go in one more time. Up front, man, do I enjoy how creamy this is on the palate. The mouthfeel of this thing does stick out as being pretty impressive. The flavors are along the lines of, I would say, an Oreo cookies and cream. I was even just at um, Cold Stone recently, and they got an Oreo's cream ice cream. Reminds me a lot of that on the front of the palate with a little bit of that raspberry jam coming through. So mostly just talking again about vanilla leaning up front, still getting hints of the chocolate, still getting hints of the raspberry. Let's get into mint palette. Hmm. Mid palette's where the double oak comes into it. Really nice roasted marshmallow on top of all that. Oh, man. You know, gosh, I'm really going back to Cold Stone. They had a marshmallow ice cream, too, now that I'm thinking about it. That's what my daughter got, and I got to try that. Mm. Really uh, going back to this Cold Stone memory. I'll have to go back here soon. That marshmallow is really covered in char as well. So you gave that thing a really good toast. It's no longer raspberry. It's actually a little bit of a medicinal cherry now, mid-palate. So that's kind of transitioning a little bit. And then mainly going back to the, the coffee or even a toffee note. Um, maybe even they're both there if it was a toffee with a dark roast espresso all next to each other. But once again, it's kind of living in that range pretty consistently. All right, let's get into the finish. Mm. on the finish the double oak really does take over yet again it even gets into like a dusty kind of oak feel to it so you get more of a distinguished oak than just the marshmallow though the marshmallow is still there it does have a marshmallow cream to it and then you're just hovering around again the vanilla creams the chocolate uh on the finish it's more of like a dry cacao powder um than it is like a straight up chocolate and not getting too much of the espresso anymore. Maybe just lingering on the end just a little bit, but nothing that I would hang my hat on. But with that said, you know, this thing, I mean, if this oiliness can show up in this glass, you know, I know I just got like a little bit there. Yeah, look at that. I mean, look how oily this thing is. Even though it's only 90.4 proof, oh man, everything it got from that second barrel just added to this viscosity that shows up on the finish. It's probably one of the best finishes I've had on something that's that low proof, honestly. And at the age as well, when you consider that. All right, I'm going to go in for one more sip and let's go into the official scores. Oh, man. Love it. I love getting to sit here and sip on it on this porch. Oh, so glad to get back into some double oaks. Let's pull up the scores here. So on the channel here, we do have a scoring system, breaks it down into three categories. We got the flavor score, the experience score, and the value score. Flavor score is just how enjoyable it was at the nose, the front of the palate, mid palate, back of the palate, just that flavors. Did I just enjoy the flavors? Regardless of what it was giving me, how much did I just enjoy it from a raw sense? The experience score gets more into the technical components. That's where we get into the complexity, the mouth feel, the length of the finish, the balance, that type of thing. And then for value, I think it's important to have a little bit of value at this. You know, this was a $65 bottle. Um, you know, you can find it for $60, $65, pretty much everywhere in the country. That's great value. So where we net at on this particular one, so this is the store pick. So just keep in mind, there's probably a range here. There's, there's some that are going to be better than this, and there's some that are going to be worse than this but when we're starting at an overall score of 78 and i'm saying some are better and some are worse and you're what we're pointing to something in the range of an 82 to an 86 then that hangs with a lot of things that we review on this channel and we review a lot of bottles that are harder to get and more expensive than this so that's what sticks out to me when it comes to this final score but the flavors 
gave it a 77.5. Tell you what, if it just gave a little bit more on the nose, that would have bumped the flavor up into the 80s. But I liked everything that this was doing. Um, the experience score, you know, love the finish. I love the uh, viscosity of it. The complexity of it was just okay. That's where I think I just gave it sevens across the board. And then the nose, again, that's where it really did lose a lot of its points. It's just not giving anything off the nose. So ultimately, the value, I gave that a full 10 out of 10, 100 here. That, that gets the full points for the value. So who would I recommend this to? Man, I'd recommend this to everybody. And I do recommend this to everybody. And I continue to recommend this to everybody. I think everybody should have a bottle of this on their shelf. And do I plan to buy another? Yes. Yes, I do. If I had to estimate, I have probably gone through five, six, seven, like just regular shelfers of the Double Oak and probably somewhere between eight, nine, ten of these store picks of the Double Oak over the last five, six years, because this was one I cut my teeth on as well. So this one, my journey goes back even further with, but that's essentially how I would summarize this one. Once again, I think the most impressive thing about it is final score of a 78. It hangs with a lot of things that we typically review on the site. And, you know, that in itself just makes it stand out as something that you should just have all the time then. Well, that sums up my thoughts on the Woodford Reserve Double Oak. As you can see, I'm a pretty big fan of it. I'm going to enjoy this little sip that I have left as I kick back and probably watch the sunset here pretty soon. So thank you for joining me for this outdoor tasting, everybody. I'll catch you later, whiskey friends. Bye, everyone.